press head the option to ask questions live or submit them in absentia ahead of the event. We will begin with pre-submitted questions. The first question is for uh, Gambit Nats from Joshua Wilkinson of Platchat. Gambit have a reputation for destroying teams in scrims. During the recent win in Europe, the team also seemed to play better after qualifying for Berlin when the pressure was off. Did you feel more relaxed and able to play at your best in those games? Do you see nerves as an issue with your young roster? I don't have any. Go ahead. Okay, okay. About the question, I think we don't have any nerves uh, about me. I'm going to say to myself, I'm playing the whole match. Like... Uh, one second. <laughs> Can you take the mic next to you? The, uh, two from your left. Oh, unlucky. <laughs> hello, hello. Yes. Okay. There is a lot of water. Huh? <laughs> can you get some paper? Okay. About the question, can you repeat it, please? I forget already. Uh, Gambit have a reputation for destroying teams in scrims. During the recent win in Europe, the team also seemed to play better after qualifying for Berlin when the pressure was off. Did you feel more relaxed and able to play at your best during those games? Uh, do you see nerves as an issue with your young roster? We already relaxed after the CIS region, after the match of the Team Liquid. I get to have a lot of confidence right now, and I think it's not going to be a lot of nervous like it was before, but the uh, first match is going to be really interesting to see. Thank you. The next question is for Brave and Star XO uh, from Valorant Zone GC Media. Two of the best teams in Europe right now will face each other in the first match of Gru Group A. Brave and Star XO, how do you feel about the draw? Uh, I feel great. Like. Uh... It's obviously very, very difficult to play EU team in the opening match, but we'll do our best and show a good game. Hello. Uh, it's, I'm feeling bad because EMEA, two EMEA, EMEA teams uh, are facing in the first. Uh, but we will show the good game and we will do our best. Uh, yeah, that's it. The next question is for StarXO from Joshua Wilkinson of PlatChat. At the last Masters, any teams were not playing Sky. Do you think she is now a must-pick agent? Does this give EMEA an advantage? Hmm. I think it, it all depends on the play style of her players. Like if you cannot play Sky, you just don't play it. But I think she's very strong now in the current meta and it brings a lot of like aggressive stuff and also defensive stuff to your team. It all depends. This next question is also for StarXO from Declan McLaughlin of Upcomer. How do you feel about playing Supermassive Blaze again in your group so soon after playing them in the Stage 3 Challengers playoffs? Uh, as I said before, like it's an uh, interesting matchup to have it in first game, but yeah, it is what, what, it is what it is, and we just need to play it. Uh, this next question is for Gambit Nats from Valorant Zone GC Media. Uh, Ariel Pellegrin Vasquez is the per person who's asking. Analysts, commentators, and people in general are putting a lot of confidence into Gambit right now. Do you, do you also and the others also, sorry, do you and also the other players feel any pressures to play at a high level? Nope, I don't think so. Like uh, as I said before, we had a pressure in the match before the Team Liquid, but after that, I guess it's going to be much easier than it was before. Uh, the next question is for SMB Brave. Uh, this comes from VLR.GG, Diego Secaria Santos. How do you feel about such an explosive start to the team's career? kuvvetli takımınız inanılmaz kuvvetli inanılmaz hızlı ve patlayıcı bir şekilde başladı. Bununla ilgili neler düşünüyorsun? I think uh, we I believe we have the talent to do that and uh, we are showing our talents now. Uh, but we still have something to improve and we are trying to improve the the way we play. 
and they, it's even going to be stronger. This next question is for Benkai from Dustin Steiner of esports.gg. With Bren unable to attend, your team is the sole representatives from Southeast Asia. How does that affect your mentality and pressure you might be feeling coming into the event? No, I'm just kidding. I can speak English. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so when, when we found out that, <laughs> when we found out that Brent couldn't come, obviously it was a huge blow to Southeast Asia as the, as the scene in general. Like it was really unfortunate, the situation. But I don't think it adds any pressure to the team because right now we are obviously the underdogs. And I feel like we have nothing to prove, but everyone else has a point to prove. Like they, they, the rest has to prove that they're the best. While well, we're really just here to really just try our best. And I don't think it plays a huge factor into our nerves. At least I'm trying to enforce it into the team that they shouldn't feel pressured to make a statement here. They should just be here to like have fun and just go with whatever comes. Yeah. This next question is for StarXO from Josh Wilkinson of Plat Chat. Ascend were anticipated to enter Berlin as the top seed from EMEA. Does the third place finish mean Ascend are weaker than expected or SMB and Gambit are better than we thought? Hmm. I don't know. I think they're good enough to like compete in Berlin and show great potential of EU teams and, and yeah. That's it. I don't really know what to answer. This next question is for SMB Brave from Diego, Santes, Diego Santos of VLR.gg. Did the EMEA grand final loss affect the team at all in preparation for this tournament, taking into account your seeding? Uh, EMEA'de finalde, büyük finalde kaybetmeniz takımın moralini etkiledi mi? Yani seeding durumu da göz önünde bulundurulunca. No, it didn't. Uh, because sometimes you have to lose to learn more your mistakes. Uh, it, it happened in the Turkish uh, qualification. We lost early and uh, we learned a lot of things. We'll, uh, we fix our mistakes faster. So it's gonna be same in here also. Uh, the next question is for Benkai from WTM Today, Maria Ahmad. Between one and 10, what is the confidence level of Paper Rex as the Southeast Asia representative? I would say it's a really high 15 right now because when we went into our groups, we just saw that we play we are playing against vision strikers, which we play a lot in scrims. And they always um like win us really badly, like 24-0. So last night we went into their rooms and we like broke some of their wrists. So I don't think the hotel really knows, but um come Saturday, I don't think that uh I think that we're gonna probably win that match, yeah. Uh, this next question is for Nats from Alan Guy from China. During the EMEA Challenger playoffs, Gambit is seen as an underdog widely. For the Berlin Masters, do you still feel that your team is an underdog? What does the influence of being regarded as the underdog make you feel? Well, to be honest, we thought that we are underdogs, but a lot of analytics, uh, analyst people said that we're gonna win me. I don't know that they say that. But about Berlin, I don't think so that we are thinking that we are underdogs. We can show our performance for sure and we'll try to do it. We have a lot of confidence right now and we'll show our best. Okay, and this will be the final pre-submitted question for Ben Kai, also from Alan Guy of China. As the only team of, uh, from Southeast Asia in Berlin, what do you think of the major difference between Southeast Asia and the Western teams in Valorant is? So... When you say Western, I assume you are referring to the EU and any region as a whole, right? All right. So in Southeast Asia, I'd say they take practice a bit less seriously. Like sometimes they would just use it as ways to just boost their ego and not really practice anything. So in the end, they don't really learn anything. But as compared to, so we've had a couple of scrims already in the last few days. And I'd say that it's a lot easier to apply theories that we come up with during practice over here 
than it is compared to Southeast Asia because the ways that these Western teams react are how we think the game should be played as compared to Southeast Asia. Yeah. We will now pivot to taking live questions from the audience. We will begin with Andres Puig from Alerta uh, Geek in Chile. Please unmute your mic and ask the question. Hi guys, um, it's Andres Put from Alerta Geek Chile. My question is for either Star XO or Brave. Um, what are your thoughts on the bracket draw? And do you think seeding matters if this can happen in future tournaments? Yes. Okay, it's on now. Uh, kura çekimi hakkında, kura çekimin sonuçları hakkında neler düşünüyorsun? Eğer önümüzdeki turnuvalarda da bu tarz bir kura çekimi gerçekleşecekse, sence gerçekten seeding'in bir önemi var mı? Uh, as I said before, I feel bad. Uh, I think EMEA, two of EMEA teams shouldn't play play uh, in the first. Uh, yeah, that's it. It, it could be better to see the, uh, the group. Uh, we will now go to Aaron Down from The Loadout. Hello, gents. Can you hear me okay? We yep. can hear you. Lovely. Uh, so my question is for Nats. Uh, now, there have been a fair few comparisons made between uh, yourself and uh, Dapper from Sentinels. So obviously, you are both very, very prolific Sentinel players play a mean Viper as well. I was just wondering what your take on those comparisons are and what you think about Dapper as a player. He's a really good player for sure. And I think he's the best Sentinel right now, but I hope in this tournament we will decide who is the better one. Uh, our next question will be Halo from Halo of Thoughts. Hi guys, um, this one's for Stark, so Nats and Brave. Um, obviously, going into the play challenges planes, um, there was a lot of talk about the meta and how Europe or EMEA um, seem to be reluctant to play Astra. Um, do you guys feel that she is actually a strong part of the meta right now? And if you have had to, have you had to make any adjustments to to actually playing her? Hmm. Uh, I think Astra is really strong right now, not on every map though, but for me, it everything depends on the team playstyle and if you can fit Astra into your own playstyle with the team, but she's definitely strong and yeah, you can use her. Yeah, it has the same opinion. Astra is really strong, but it depends from the play as well, because uh, you have to react fastly on the situation, you have to take the orbs. They use the abilities and really hard because that uh, hero has only five and you have to react on the map what is going on you have to listen to your to your teammates and it's hard that, but uh, if you're gonna do right you'll be really good on this uh, agent and it's really good for your team i agree with them uh astra has a lot of power on controlling the zones uh, but it also depends on the, your play style and on the map. Uh, but if I if I buff Astra, I will do I will uh, decrease the cooldowns. Cooldowns are too much for Astra, I think. Okay, we will next go to Declan from Upcomer. Hi, yeah, this is for Nats. I was just wondering what you thought about the triple initiator compositions that Havan Liberty has recently adopted on Bind and Ascent and just triple initiator cops in general in Valorant. Triple initiator, so that's interesting. Let me think about that. Can you give some examples maybe? No? Uh, yeah, they play Sky, Sova, um, and then also Ko. Uh, sometimes, and then I forget the third initiator, sorry. Oh, to be honest, that uh, looks pretty good. You have the control of the whole map, and it's interesting, but uh, you have to waste your abilities really good, I guess, because if you're going to lose them, if you're going to waste them, 
you don't have the information about the map and you can't uh, stop the opponents and they will go in if you're talking about the CT side. If you're talking about the T side, it looks good. You, have, can, uh, you can control the drones. You have the drone, you have the dog. Also, you have the chaos knives. You have a lot of fresh flashes. It's good, but uh, your team uh, have to know how to play with that. And it's hard. Uh, the next question will be from Dice, Dustin Steiner of esports.gg. Dustin, your mic is muted. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Uh, this question is for uh, StarXL and uh, Brave. Um, how do you guys feel about uh, EMEA's place in the um, international? like landscape, where do you guys see yourselves and compared to the other regions? Hmm. Good, like uh, I think, uh, I don't know. I forgot question already by the way, but uh, I think EMEA teams, if you could repeat like a bit. Sure. Uh, yeah. How do you guys feel about uh, EMEA teams like placement among the other teams internationally? Like, how do you feel your you compare strength wise? Yeah, I think uh, both of our three teams are very strong right now. And they're very strong. Uh, OK, they're just very strong right now. And I think uh, we will compete very good in this tournament better than in NA. Um, I think if we compare our team play to NA, NA is more firepower. Okay, I'll talk about my team. Uh, my team also is uh, playing with firepower. And uh, we will make the difference, I think. SMB will make the difference uh, between EMEA and NA. Yeah. Uh, the next question will be from Wesley Pereria from the Clutch Esports. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, my question is for uh, for my question is for Ben K. Uh, with embrace the battery from the masters, do you what Pepper Rex feel this is the time to able to show CS strange that if even before? Huh? <laughs> Can you please rephrase your question? Uh, okay. Um, with embrace the battery from the masters, do you at Paper Rex feel this? Oh. Uh, That's all. <laughs> I think we lost. Uh, I can repeat. Yes, please. Okay. Um, with Brems, the battery from the masters, do you at Pepper Rex feel this is the time to able to show CS stranger than ever before? Okay, okay, I understand now. Um, so you're asking me if now is a better time to show that Counter-Strike players from Southeast Asia is better? And masters? If that is your question, I would say I don't think this game can be played with how um with how Counter-Strike was last time. It's a really different game and a really different approach. So I don't think we should have the mindset of playing it like Counter-Strike because Valorant is a totally different ballpark and we just have to adapt to what everyone else is doing right now. Because I, I would say as a region, Southeast Asia is behind. Yeah. Thank you. The next question will be from Diego Santos from VLR.gg. Hey, uh, I've just got a question for everyone. Uh, I'd like to ask, what are some changes you guys would like to see for VCT next year? Any change is fair game, just no matter how drastic. Uh, it's a good question, but I think everything is good right now, and uh, I don't think so with that 
but uh, we need some changes. It's good, it's good, in my opinion. Um, uh, I can go. I guess it's the way that Riot is handling the tournament format right now. It's really commendable, uh, commendable, especially for Southeast Asia, because when you compare it to other scenes like Counter Strike and yeah, mainly Counter Strike, um, Riot is a lot more involved with the entire world in terms of the regions. So you get to see a lot of teams come from Asia because typically in Counter-Strike, you get maybe at least one, one or two teams at most from, Asia, from the entire Asia continent. But in Valorant, you get at least like two teams from Korea, two teams from Japan, two teams from Southeast Asia. So I think the way that Riot is handling right now, I wouldn't change it um, in terms of like uh, giving everyone equal chances. Uh, slots can be better uh, CI, between CIS, EMEA, and the uh, Turkish region. Uh, it can be changed. That's what I think. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, Brandon from Run It Back. Hi, this question is for uh, Bankai. Just kind of following up on what you said regarding uh, your region being a little behind. What do you think uh, is the reason for that? And what can your region do to catch up? I think the reason for that is just because esports in general isn't a very viable career option in Asia. Because in Asia, if you have, basically, if you're Asian and you have Asian parents, you either become a doctor or a lawyer or you're just like trash. So um, I think that's maybe one of the contributing factors into why Asia in general is behind. But also a lot of them, from what I've observed, they don't really have the right attitudes when approaching stuff like practice and taking it as a job. A lot of them take it as like a side hobby instead of an actual profession. So I feel if there was a way to summarize why Asia in general is behind. It's just because we have a lack in a lack in professionalism. Yeah. Uh, the next question will be from Ariella Vasquez from Valorant Zone. Hi guys, this one's for Nat. I would like to know if there's any team you want to play against in playoffs. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always saying the same teams. It's going to be Sentinels and Vision Strikers. Only two of them. The next question will be from Pablo Abarca from Prince of Valorant. Thanks for uh, Nats. Uh, how do you see yourselves against the other teams in your group? Uh, how do I see myself against the other teams in group? I don't know. We feel confidence. We will try to show our performance. We will try to show our best. We didn't think so. We, uh, we're ready to play it against uh, every team because we are here and we're preparing for everybody. And we don't scare to play against uh, some other teams. We can play against each other. The next question will be from Bruce Yang from Valorant Spike. Hello, everyone. Um, I have a question uh, for the Bankai. Uh, for the first match, your team were against the Vision Strikes from the Korea region. Do you have any scrims or practice match with them before? Because two regions are very close, you know. Do you have any special strategy for them? Yeah, that's all. Thanks. So we have been practicing Vision Strikers a lot. They are one of our main like practice buddies because in Asia, it's really hard to find a team that's on their level. And I think, honestly, I feel like the, the rest of the teams here at this tournament should be scared of them because they are crazy sharp, like really, really crazy sharp. 
But in terms of preparation for our match on Saturday, we've already like uh, we've injured some of their hands uh, last night, as I've said just now. And maybe later we're just gonna pour some water on their equipment and just like hope for the best on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, the next question will be from Diego Santos, blr.gg. Oh, I, I forgot to remove my reaction. Sorry. I don't have anything. Thank you. It. The next question will then be from Manu Petito from Valorant, Spain. Uh, hello, everyone. My question is for Nats and Benkai. Uh, you mainly play uh, Sentinels like Killjoy or Cypher. Do you think uh, the game right now needs another Sentinel agent? And if the answer is yes, what do you think that character needs to be a full and complete Sentinel? Thank you so much. I think it's already enough. We have three Sentinels, it's Cypher, it's Killjoy, and I will say it's gonna be Viper as well. If you say we need one more, it depends from other agents, I guess. We don't need the four Sentinels right now. If the riots will add some other agents, uh, it will depend from it, I guess. Uh, I agree with Ned as far as Sentinels are concerned because I feel like Viper, Cypher, and Killjoy already have a very wide range of abilities. And there's, I don't, I can't imagine of another agent that Riot could come up with that could supersede those abilities. So I feel like what we have right now in the pool is really enough. Uh, the next question will be for uh, from Declan of Upcomer. Yeah, this is for Brave. I was just wondering um, what you thought of the skill level of Zeta Division going into this tournament. Uh, Zeta Division on Yetenek seviyesi hakkında neler düşünüyorsun turnuva gelirken? Uh, we played against them in Prague. Uh, I think they are good at using the skills. Uh, they are using the utilities very well. Uh, they can do they can do surprise, but let's see. And this question will be from uh, Halo from Halo of Thoughts. This will be the final Zoom question. Okay, so it's one for Brave. Um, I just wanted to get his um, thoughts on how um, the sort of coach analyst Tanzik has um, helped them improve because he obviously came in um, sort of during the, the qualifying stages just to, to get his uh, thoughts on just, just on how he's helped them out. Tani, elemeler sırasında aslında koçunuz size katıldı. Onun takıma katkılarından birazcık bahsedebilir misin? Size yani ve takıma nasıl yardımcı oluyor? Uh, he's good at analyzing the teams uh, and he's good at uh, finding the mistakes in our team and he helped us a lot in uh, finding our mistakes, finding our gaps and uh, the communication mistakes. That's what he helped. Okay, and then we have some questions from the on-site media. Um, give us one second. <clears throat> Hi, this is a question for all the players. Um, I'm going to assume that you all think you're going to get out of your group, but can you name the other team you expect to get out of your group? Each. From my group, I would like uh, to have SMB out because they're from Europe, of course, but time will show. 100 fees. Uh, I think it's going to be Ascent. I think Vision Strikers. Thank you. This will conclude uh, this press conference. Uh, please stand by for the third press conference, which will begin momentarily. <laughs>